All right, you beautiful humans, let's discuss and hopefully answer some questions about whether ad blockers are hurting the creators out there and specifically honing in on the YouTube creator while we try to balance the perspective of the consumer as well as those creating this content. And I know it's been a while since I've been on this channel, but I am trying to create more content. Now, of course, there is no surprise here that marketing just ruins pretty much every good platform, especially when it starts out and we seem to have all of these features at no cost to us. And often it's a pretty low barrier to entry. And even though YouTube's ad revenue was almost 29 billion in 2021 with 8.6 billion of that revenue in Q4, it actually beat out Netflix in that same quarter. But the difference being that YouTube's revenue is built from the sweat equity of the creator, although they do host our content for free, so I can't really complain. But the split for the partner program is that it's 55% it's alloc that's allocated to the creator where those ads are being served on their particular channel. And as I said, I wanna tackle the conversation from the perspective of the creator as well as the user experience. And before anyone starts commenting about getting a real job, I know it's difficult to understand that someone can make a living on this platform and may not really understand it from an outside perspective. Kind of like when you pass by the, that road construction crew and there's one individual down in the hole or a ditch working on something while there's three or four others surrounding that hole looking like they're just watching what's happening with no added value. And there is no disrespect here that about that profession because I was one of those guys on a crew like that where we were rerouting traffic uh, marking out lanes, crosswalks, and stop bars and intersections to repaint the line. So pretty much a thankless job since we were holding up traffic in New York. But the quick point here is that we often tend to judge what we don't understand. And the impetus of this video was due to a few conversations over on Twitter about creators talking about YouTube Vanced, which has features to customize your viewing experience, but more importantly, to block the ads that on the videos that you wanna watch. And we really don't need to spend much time on this workaround as it's probably a dedicated video in and of itself. But what I will say is that the other solution would be to sign up for YouTube Premium, which is a subscription-based service, yes. And I think one of the biggest obstacles here though is the thought that YouTube is free and why should you have to pay to consume and quickly forgetting that the OGs out there, such as Hulu and Netflix, where we stream, have either been supported uh, by ads or have been subscription-based since the beginning. And let's also put this into perspective that YouTube reports that over 1 billion hours of streaming occurs each day, which is definitely pretty baffling to me, even being on the platform. And that cannot be said about Hulu or Netflix. So many of us, not all, not all, many of us though, are here on YouTube more often than we may be on those other platforms. But let's start from the perspective of the creator. With the great resignation in full force, I've talked about it, you may have seen an uptick in people trying to turn this endeavor into a side hustle or a business. But let me just say that I've been a creator on this platform for a very long time, and the trends that I've seen over the years that there are plenty uh, starting out on this journey, but many won't be here in a year's time, and maybe even not after several months, because it, it's not easy. And some creators have come out and said that the loss of the potential revenue due to these ad blockers has either inhibited certain growth of their business, and in some cases, revenue that could amount to being able to hire more staff or even their first hire. And now some of this is kind of calculated based on, you can go into YouTube studio and try to see how many views were actually monetized versus how many weren't monetized. And there's some tricky math there because maybe sometimes an ad or a particular set of ads weren't served on that video because YouTube didn't do that. So there's a little bit of an assumption that the ad blocker is causing some of those non-monetized views. So I just wanted to put that out there. but. Unpacking it further, when we talk about YouTube being a real business, many of us out here that are doing this full time are treating this as a business, just as I treat my other businesses outside of this one. And so we build teams, we might rent office space, we pay taxes, at, at, at least I do. <laughs> so if there's any question about what the entrepreneurial path looks like in comparison to others, let's just say that I'm not in front of a camera as a CEO of that other business that has nothing to do with YouTube, but I also build teams. I have office space and I pay federal and state taxes. 
And so as much as we see the highlight reel of some of these biggest, the, like the biggest creators on the platform, we're quick to judge how lucky they might be when in fact, they're not only running a business, but because they're in front of a camera and yes, by choice, but self-selecting to be in the wide open world of the keyboard warriors. But I do want to pivot to the user experience for a second because I don't want this to be all about the creator, but this does come down to your experience of getting the information or being entertained, whatever your reason, and being interrupted with ads. And you'll remember when I mentioned that YouTube gets over 1 billion hours of streaming a day, and that's a lot of attention. And of course, advertisers want to get in front of those eyeballs because unlike cable or really consuming content on a television, the viewer most likely is on a mobile device or a computer that they may be more inclined to either click on those ads or at least open up a browser to investigate that, that particular brand later. And that's just math. But you may have seen an ad in this video. And, and as, as of this upload right now, I don't even qualify for the partner program like I do on my main channel. So I have zero control over what you're seeing as far as an ad, because YouTube has stated that they can serve an ad on any video that may potentially appeal to an advertiser or a particular audience. It's a free platform. So for me, I, I get it and I'm just trying to play by the rules. However, what about the videos where you may see an ad pop up like every three minutes or so, and the creator does have some control over that because we can go into YouTube studio and set these up. And I agree that this may be excessive and would almost guarantee a very poor viewing experience. But let's also answer a question about creators that have a sponsor for that video and may have like a 15 or 30 second read, maybe, maybe even longer uh, to mention that sponsor. And first, as a creator, I would say congrats because for many of us trying to create sustainable, uh, sustainable business here, I can guarantee that these are typically better sources of revenue than AdSense. And hopefully it's a sponsor that aligns with the community because I know that these are also annoying if it's not even relevant to who the audience is. But what's more annoying is also seeing an ad pop up in addition to the sponsor. And I've seen this on Twitter constantly, like that. The, that's kind of like the response of the community because isn't the creator already making income from that sponsor? And of course, a sponsored video with ads every three minutes is definitely a non-starter and I'm with you. However, we've covered that the sponsor may be paying the creator, but then how does YouTube then generate that income if that creator completely turns off ads? Which honestly, if YouTube wants to place an ad, especially if the video is performing well, you're gonna see an ad. But that's the point here is that if a creator chooses to remove ads or had the ability to not show ads on any of the videos, then do you think these videos would get served to you if YouTube can't generate revenue from them? It hurts their bottom line. And I know you can say that they've got plenty of runway here, but, but here's the thing. This is the business model. And with more and more views and more and more advertisers wanting to get access to those views, even targeted access, it's just where we are. So even if they have Patreon, um, cause I've heard things like, well, what about if the creator just does, has a Patreon account or some other membership service that you could subscribe to so that you're supporting your favorite creator. And of course that is fantastic. But even if a creator's primary source of income is an AdSense, it's still up to the creator to be a good partner for YouTube and their partners, the advertisers. So this begs the question of whether blocking ads is still the way to go to give you a better experience or because your time is valuable and you wanna support the creator you hang out with the most, but again, your value here is your time, then there is YouTube Premium to take care of that. And I know that there's an argument of paying for yet another subscription or not being able to afford it right now. And I wanna speak directly from the point of view as a consumer. And I appreciate getting ad-free like YouTube music thrown in with that service. And I know it may not be as robust as others, but it'll continue to become more competitive. We are starting, however, to see more and more subscription models like in a la carte services, because with cable being cut, it's, it's probably like the best example I can give, but with cable being cut to the bone, these businesses are having to spin off into their own, which really comes down to the psychology of it all. Like when, when everything is like bundled and it's just like one flat fee, of course, minus taxes and additional fees that the cable company might throw in, but this apparently is easier to understand. 
So if you're someone that still has cable, just think about all of the channels you're probably not even watching, but still paying for, that the cable company is allocating some of your money to those networks that you're not even consuming. But software is another example. And we used to be able to just buy the software and get regular upgrades when, like, with that original purchase. And some software is now going to a model of eventually forcing in, like, an upgrade to get that next iteration. And what we're also seeing is more of just the monthly or annual subscription to get ongoing upgrades and support. As long as you're like you're a subscriber of that that software or service. And it does seem like we're not really an owner of anything, really just kind of renting these services. So it's kind of what we've shifted to and what we'll see more of. So this really begs the question of time, which is what I always focus on. And if you want to remove the creator and even YouTube as a business out of the equation, that of course I think would be pretty hard, but you can give it a try. But what about your experience on the platform and the time you could save? Ad blockers, yes. That's a way to, to, to save time and to make it a better user, user experience. But then there's the risk of violating the terms of service and getting blocked or banned from that particular platform, which many of it won't really like matter much to, to you to just maybe even create another account or just kind of move on. However, I do have a feeling that with the use of these ad blockers, our overall experience may become more intrusive because as much as the creator doesn't want to miss out on revenue, you better believe YouTube is not going to let that happen without a fight. And personally, I can see the benefit of premium because I have a family account with five of us consuming content on the platform. And that is a lot of time we're getting back so that we can actually do the things that matter the most. So, I mean, I, I really didn't want this to be like, this is not supposed to be an ad for premium. I get nothing as far as uh, like uh, no affiliate or anything like that uh, if you sign up with premium or not. One of the things that I just get concerned about uh, from just even a consumer standpoint is that I, I remember side lo loading apps, jailbreaking things to try to load up apps on devices many years ago. And what I will say is that yes, Google and YouTube, it, it is sharing our information, but I also get concerned with some of these other third parties as far as them saying like, well, your information is secure, we don't share it. And yeah, you can create dummy accounts if you want or, or spam email accounts to, to create them. I just get concerned like that the short term gain may end up hurting you in the long run in, in some regard. And I don't I can't speak to the specifics of it. But what I will just say is that, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm a creator, so I'm uh, I'm certainly biased in that regard, but I'm also a consumer and, and biased in the way that the subscription model kind of stinks, but this is kind of what we're doing here. And if you're a student, um, they do have, have a, a lower fee for students. And if you're part of a family account, I mean, you can have up to six for like something like $17.99 uh, for up to six users. And, and part of that revenue does go to the creator and you don't get served the ads. I would love to have a conversation with you in the comment section below. Really an open and honest conversation, both from a creator's perspective and also as someone who uses the platform. You go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those beautiful faces. And I hope to be able to catch you right back here on the next one.